take what they want. She wants to dance in the streets, Bo. Later, man. Later on. One staircase in these elevators, that's it, sir. You checked every office? Unlocked every one, Inspector. Looked in every room, every broom closet, under the desk. Air conditioning ducts? Personally. What about walking safes? Well, there aren't any. The robbers just disappeared. Wow! <laughs> made it. You made it, Al. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Come here. You really don't want to go dancing in the streets, do you? Hmm. I didn't think so. <laughs> that didn't seem like a Detroit kiss. A Detroit no, kiss, huh? No. What is a Detroit kiss? Well, when your husband what? says he's been out of town for 10 days working and then he comes home. I have been out of town. Hey, listen, would you like to go upstairs and explain that to me in detail? Would you like to do that? much more like a Minneapolis kiss. A Minneapolis kiss? What do you mean a Minneapolis kiss? I haven't even been mm, in Minneapolis. Would you like to oh. go upstairs? Hmm? That's what I thought you said. Hmm. Okay. That's exactly what I thought you said. Oh. What are we here? Hmm. It says because. Because of what? Mm -hmm. Because we're in love. That's Duke. Yes, Duke. It's got to be Duke. Oh, <laughs> you sent it. Huh? No, I didn't yes, send you it. Did. No. Well, why don't we just have one for the road? Oh, no, 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 Ingrid. Oh, you scream it. We were going upstairs, remember? <laughs> no, no, no. We're going upstairs. <sighs> yes, all right, all right. I'll go get two glasses. No, no, no. You stay here. I'll get them. Don't go away, all right?
fully awake yet. Duke? Yeah. How you doing? Ingrid? Kirk's into it personally. I thought I heard his voice. Kirk? No, he, he went out. He'll be back. Where's Ingrid now? Coroner. I want her buried at Pine Acres, next to my father. Okay. What, you call my mother? I did. No flights from Atlanta tonight. She's driving down. Yeah, she's a lousy driver. I tried to point that out. She hung up on me. Dr. Richards, Mr. Longstreet. Am I blind? We believe so. Permanently? Well, it's not my field. You're rather sidestep it, huh? No, it's just that I don't feel qualified. The specialist will be examining you. What part of me is your specialty, doctor? Well, I'd like to say your spirits. They seem to have survived. When can I leave? I don't know. Duke? Yeah? Will you drop by my office in the morning? What do I tell him? To open the mail. Why didn't you tell him he'll never see again? One shock at a time. Look, I know this man. He has handled dozens of investigations for my company. His entire career is built at getting at the truth. Now, you stand to hurt him a lot more by withholding. But he appears to be in extreme shock. Oh, you heard him in there. His mind is clicking away. Well, under the circumstances, that's highly abnormal. Any time now, Slab will come up and hit him and hit him hard, Mr. Page. Lieutenant? Yeah? On the radio, Bradville for you. All right, now, how the print boys dust that before they run it through the lab? There was a case in New York where the bomb squad picked up a chunk of casing with a perfect set of fingerprints. Why shouldn't we get lucky, right? Oh, bud. I'll take this over here, Tony. Okay, Lieutenant. Eddie? Gantry here. Got a man here, Lieutenant Gantry. He claims he can help us. Okay, ask him if he'd mind coming by and looking at some pictures around uh, 11.15. I'll hold. He'll be there. All right, that's good. Okay. That's the first liquor store we found that sold something as big as a magnum of champagne in the past month. It's a lucky thing they didn't booby trap a bottle of bourbon, right? Can you imagine trying to track down all the bourbon buyers in New Orleans? Doctor's orders. I'll tell you when. It's not up to you, Mr. Longstreet. Now, Mr. Longstreet. Just get back into bed, Mr. Longstreet. There isn't a thing to be worried about. No one's going to hurt you, Mr. Longstreet. Just relax and please get back into bed. Nobody's going to hurt you. Now, if you'll just please get back into bed, Mr. Longstreet. Hey, what are you doing? Stay out of this, Mr. Fisher. Nobody's at what's going on. You leave him alone. Hey. No, what's happening? No, nothing, Mike. No. Duke? Duke? Yeah, yeah, Mike. Um, the, uh, the doctor thinks that you need a... He thinks you're in shock and you need a knockout shot. Let him help you. He can help me. Except the memory of that champagne bucket, that card, that word, because, because. No sleep. No sleep, Duke, until I can figure out because of what. All the surprise I made it in one piece. Just <laughs> grateful, Alice, and relieved. This is Lieutenant Gantry. Miss Longstreet, Doctor. Go in. This is Mrs. Longstreet. Miss Longstreet, he's been sedated. I'm afraid he won't recognize you. I didn't come here for recognition, Doctor. Uh, I. <laughs> I. Can't. 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 I. Can't
Mike? No, I don't. No. No, I won't. Uh, <laughs> uh, can't see you. Change in the diagnosis. No. We've had several specialists look at him, but the opinion's the same. How did it all happen? A person of persons unknown caused a bomb to explode in Mike's courtyard last night. It was a booby trap, Alice meant to kill him. Oh, poor Ingrid. It's not much consolation, Mrs. Longstreet, but I intend to give myself the deep satisfaction of nailing the people responsible. I. I suppose one could say that my son himself is responsible. He's caused many people a good deal of inconvenience. Only criminals. Who are people. Obviously, one of them felt impelled to retaliate. Well, we're opening every file, and we're going to check back into every insurance investigation, every felony that Mike's broken. We're going to take all those names, dates, and places and put them on a the computer. Are you with the New Orleans police officer? Uh, Kirk's the head of the criminal investigation division. But Mike worked in other cities. He worked in other countries. Your company sent him to France this year and involved him in that messy scandal. No, he wasn't involved in the scandal, Alice. It was the people who were trying to defraud my company. I don't see how you can equate the investigator with the investigated. If you'll forgive my getting something off my chest. Well, he's through with all that now, isn't he? He was the best, Alice. Whether you liked what he was doing or didn't, he was still the best. Excuse me. Beautiful winter's morning. I haven't seen anything this dark since I took Marjorie Allen to the Tunnel of Love. Are you trying to get rid of me? I must have missed something. What's Marjorie Allen got and to do I with it? I drove that? all the way from Atlanta. Drove, mind you, to see that you were on the speedy road to recovery. And here you are, cheerful. Cheerful. That's better. Now I can see that I'm needed. Have a drink of water. Michael, you do understand what you're doing to yourself. I don't choose to understand. Honey, you can hurt yourself this way. Grief is normal. It's natural. And it's good. Grief is a, it's a form of taking thought. It prevents destruction from going too far, too fast, when something threatens the mind. And grief can be forgotten when it's all over. Let yourself grieve, Michael. Feel your loss. Let it possess you for now. <laughs> Mrs. Longstreet, you're a beautiful, brilliant lady. An authority, pillar of academia. Right now, I'd be much happier if you'd function. As a simple, uncomplicated mother, do whatever it is mothers do at times like these. And save your lectures on existentialism for your students, please. I have to tell you a terrible thing. The doctor who helped me when you were born forgot to sever the umbilical cord. Your suffering is still my suffering. Now, what do you think of that? How long can you stay? As long as I'm of value. Would you pack Ingrid's things? She has a sister living in Stockholm. Send them to her. Clothes, furs, jewelry, everything. What about the furniture? What about the... Sell it. Sell everything. Except the portrait of Ingrid. I want to keep that. I want to... I want to look at that. Whenever I begin to forget what happened last night, if I can. Look at it, Michael. Yes. Not with your eyes, my darling. Not with your eyes ever again. Nobody has put it quite that directly. They don't know your strength like I do. 
Are you sure? Yes. A specialist is uh, supposed to come here and examine me. It's a formal procedure. They said with a foregone, inescapable conclusion. Come in, Lieutenant. Kirk, they tell me you finally got some sleep. Yeah, you sound like you didn't. But we've been keeping busy. Mike, I'm keeping a 24-hour watch outside this door. So whoever wanted you last night, for whatever reason, they may still feel the same way this morning. Is it's going to take the first eight hours, Mike. Then Johnny Bradville will relieve him. Eight on, eight off, till we get the people. No one's going to bother me anymore, Kurt. The line is dead as far as they're concerned. This way, Mike. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me. Maybe they stopped you from seeing, but you can still think. So whatever their reason was, as far as I'm concerned, it's still there. Uh, Duke and I will go over a list. We'll make it out. We'll bring it out to you in a few days. We'll go over it with you. I'll be here. Okay. Good luck. Yeah? Thank you. So long, Mrs. Longstreet. Bye, Lieutenant. We're coming to a little brick pavement here. And now we're approaching four steps. Here we are. One. Two. Oh, morning, Miss Longstreet. Miss Longstreet. Morning, Doctor. Come right in. This will be your apartment. Right now it's unfurnished, but you tell us what you want and we'll put it in. While you're watching. That way, you and the furniture can start off on the same foot. Please call me Dan. I have a little hang-up about being called doctor. I'll call you Mike. So that's the living room. You have the bedroom and the kitchen in here. Oh, this will be the area out of which you learn to radiate. Well, you and your mother have goodbyes to attend to, so I'll drop back after she leaves. Thank you, doctor. Well, what did you think of him? A nice, sincere voice. Good kickoff speech. You're coming to a fireplace. Reminds me of a headmaster in a press school. Ha <laughs> ha. That's your problem. You wouldn't say that if you could see him. I'm putting your suitcase back here in the closet. He wears tennis shoes, old ones. And he has on a, a faded blue work shirt, open at the collar with a beautiful chest full of properly graying hair. <laughs> so that's what you're really thinking about all the time. Huh? Oh, you devil. Dan Stockton has done unbelievable things with the unsighted. <gasps> Look, the sun is coming up. I don't have a lot of time to give him. I hope you made that clear. Because if you didn't, I will. Did you hear me? Out here. Mother? Out here on the balcony. Those are the French doors. It's six paces from there to me. And this is the railing. And this balcony is exactly like your Aunt Marcella's in Kingsport. 
What's out there? Out there's a levee, Mississippi. They're practicing archery. And lawns, trees, and that police officer. Well, I better be getting on. Goodbye, Mother. This is an exercise focusing attention on the senses. We'll start with hearing. Why don't you get in the middle of the room? Hmm? I want you to listen to sounds. Don't try to identify them. And don't let the sounds evoke a chain of associations. Just listen. Let the sounds happen to you. Don't you happen to them. You understand? Yes. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Now, listen. How much of you is listening? I don't understand the question. Well, just a little bit of you? More than a little. A lot? Yes. All of you? No, not all of you. Is the right ear listening? I think I heard the sound of the bird noises from the left ear. Well, don't try to identify the sounds, not now. And from now on, don't answer me aloud. And just think of my asking voice as simply another sound passing through your mind. My purpose, Mike, is to get you to intensify your absorption of sound. Is the face listening? The chest? Where does the sound seem to be coming from? Outside? If inside, is it just a little bit inside? Deep inside. If outside, near? Or far? Well, you see what I'm trying to get you to do, Mike? Yes, to listen with all of me. Exactly. One day your hearing will be so acute you, if you walk into a room, the walls will shout at you. <laughs> I'll have to wear earplugs up. Huh? Don't laugh. It can't happen. Sighted people are so distracted by abstractions like worry over money, worry over their children, worry over the future of mankind, they lose contact with their physical assets. They actually use less than 10% of the actual physical facilities available to them. Sighted people put themselves outside immediate experience. You've got to learn to be in the experience, Mike. So if you can teach yourself to do that, you'll be way ahead of 99% of humanity. What's holding you up? My feet. You mean your entire weight, your whole body, mind, and the aura around you are all centered in your feet? <laughs> well, I tell you, I'm certainly not standing on my hands. Yeah. Well, what's holding you down? Gravity. It's just a word, something you've been taught. Think of it as a force, something you've just discovered and don't even have a word for. Ted? Now then, let's see if we can find out what's involved in taking a step forward. Start off with the right foot, but not, not yet. Now, is the foot willing to move? It can hardly wait. You're willing to have it move? I want it to move. I haven't forgotten how to walk. OK, walk. Which way is the monument? Behind you and a little to the left.
walk, you wouldn't have bumped into that. Now listen, Mike. Here's what I'm trying to get you to do. I want you to feel every muscle in your body, all at the same time. I want you in contact with everything, the spaces around you, above you, below you. I want you to touch everything, not just your feet. To feel everything. To touch it all, with all of you. Do you understand? In my head. Only in my head. Well, get it out of your head. Stop thinking it. Be it. Where are we? Fish. We're in the French market. Which way is the river and which way is the street? Now you're right, it works. I, I can tell the difference in the bounce back. Well, bats do it. Porpoises do it. Why not us? <laughs> Sounds like a Cole Porter lyric. People hear you saying that to me, Dan, they're liable to start talking. Feeling pretty good, aren't you? Yeah, you bet. Let's see now. Uh, the river wall's over there which puts Decatur Street straight ahead, right? Well, well that's just where we're going, to Decatur Street. Uh, later, you'll be able to do this all by yourself. Cane and a dog. Uh, no dog. You don't like dogs? Yeah, I like dogs. <laughs> Everybody likes dogs, but Dan, a cane and a dog, how conspicuous can you get? Bother you to be conspicuous? Yeah, it bothers me. How do you feel about sunglasses? Cane, dog, sunglasses, how would you feel? Well, if I was the kind of a person who was bothered by being conspicuous, I'd get me a handsome pair of sunglasses. Just like these, as a matter of fact. And when I was out in the bright sunlight and everybody else was wearing dark glasses, I wouldn't be walking around out there all alone without any. Looking conspicuous. I'll think about it. Now we're coming up in the Café du Monde. I can hear the coffee cups, smell the donuts. Got a dog that told me that. I'll think about it. Curb. That's a good. How far? subject here? Little oh, water. yeah, go on. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Hey, you look younger, you know hmm? that? Oh, listen, I feel younger, specifically about uh, two years old. Already the survivor of a hundred major disasters. Hey, go, go on, sit down, sit down. Like the other night when they served us tomato aspic for dinner. <laughs> you ever try to balance aspic on a fork when you can't see? <laughs> wow. Listen, the doctor tells us you're blazing right along, Mike. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm blazing right along. Learning to walk at my age can be considered a major triumph. I am blazing right along. See, uh, 
Kirk, you like yours neat, don't you? Yeah, I'll fix it. Hmm? No, 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 no. Don't pamper. Pamper the ego. All right, now you bring the list. Yeah, between uh, Duke's files and mine, we've got a list of 14 names, any one of whom might have wished you dead. We're still waiting on uh, records of arrests or convictions from other insurance companies, you know, cases that you worked on that didn't go through Great Pacific Casualty. Now, we've already scratched 10 of these. They're serving time. Uh, and some of these guys even have a kind of grudging admiration for you. So maybe you'll have some hunches. <laughs> All right, guys, here you go. Well, how about you? Hmm? Uh, no. No, Dan wants me to sharpen my sense of taste. It seems that uh, Scotch blunts it. Well, I was looking at you. <laughs> That's all right, dummy. <laughs> the doctor okayed our leaving the list. He said he'd read it to you at the proper time. I'll leave it right here on the table. Duke? Yeah? What's the matter? What's the matter? Yeah, I can feel something coming from you. Worry. I always figured you were part gypsy. <laughs> well, you know, when dogs meet, Dan says the question whether or not they're going to make love or war is always decided by their noses. I can, uh, I can smell your trouble. Yeah, well, it's king size, Mike. It's another big jewelry hit. What do you mean, another? The same as the one that uh, we had here the night you caught that bomb. Only this one was in New York last night. They got away with two million dollars in gemstones. We're facing that claim on top of the million that we're stuck for here. say that again. Hmm? Tonight, Ingrid was killed. There was a robbery here in New Orleans? Yeah. They knocked over Von Marks. Oh, it's on the top floor. How'd they get out of the building before the alarm went off? That's the million dollar stop. The robbery in New York, same memo? Yeah. Again, one of the top floors. Absolutely no way out. Police took that place apart. Now, there wasn't any sign of the bandits. Now, it's the same gang, apparently. Three men, Halloween masks, coveralls. In and out. Oh. Couldn't be. Couldn't be what? Some connection between these robberies and someone trying to kill me. Could there, Duke? Kirk? What if... What if someone had been planning this for a long time? Staked out a whole series of robberies and a sure way to pull them off. A city here, a city there. The police in each city would worry only about their particular robbery. But the insurance companies... The insurance companies would lump them all together. They would worry collectively, wouldn't they? And who do you think they'd put on the case? Who would they have put on it? Mike. Can you get me all those reports? Well, I don't know that the doctor will okay that. No, he'll okay it. He'll okay it. He wants me to learn Braille. He's turning me off on some kitty books. Believe me, I'm not thrilled about the idea of reading Little Brown Fox stories. So you get me those reports transcribed into Braille. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Into Braille. Yeah. How about a game? I'm pretty good. In that case, I'll concede, Mr. Longstreet. I'm Nikki Bell. Not a bad Braille teacher, but a lousy handball player. You were due here yesterday, Miss Bell. Welcome. It took a while to transcribe those police reports you sent us into acceptable Braille. We don't do that every day, you know. Well, don't you find them fascinating? Appalling. I find crime appalling. I've got the rest. Oh, thanks. I was told that you rather enjoyed that. Oh, no, not the crime, the, uh, the criminal. Oh, the hunter and the hunted. <laughs> no, 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 not exactly. Matter of fact, I, uh, I feel great empathy for the criminal. There, but for the grace of. Anyway, once all good things were bad things. Out of every original sin, we found original virtue. Oh, like what, for instance? Well, you take marriage, for example. Once marriage was considered a sin against the community. Men who showed the insolence of claiming one woman of themselves were sometimes taxed, even killed. Are you impressed? Awestruck. <laughs> my mother teaches philosophy. She used to practice her lectures over my oatmeal. Okay, Miss Bell. Where do we begin? If you wish, you may feel my face.
it's a practice of mine when I start with a student. It seems to help them with their braille if they can picture me. Is that a requirement of the course? <laughs> no, not at all. Shall I take your arm? Where are we going? Well, why not over to the levee? The levee? Good, good. Just follow me. Follow me. Uh, watch out for the bike over there by the stairs, though. I think Dan tripped over it about three times last week. You're just showing off. The six dots of the Braille cell are arranged and numbered. One, two, three. To the right, and in the second row, again in descending order, we have four, five, six. This single dot hair is the letter A, the first position. Now, these two dots in the number one and number two position are the letter B. Come in, come in. Are you going to stop for a while, or shall I get you some aspirin? How do you know I've got a headache? You've been reading for hours. Your eyes must be tired. <coughs> My eyes? Certainly. You see through your eyes when you read with your fingers. Kinetic memory, if you care to know what we call it. Something's been added. I took it out of storage. What do you think of her? She has the face of a very sensitive girl. Which remains my problem. Our type keeps hoping we'll turn up now. Be blessedly overcome by compassion and fatigue. We keep living on our nerve ends. She was like that, wasn't she? Yes, she was like that. Is that why you're a teacher? <laughs> why am I a teacher? I suppose to teach myself. Sometime I'll tell you about me. Actually, I'm a fantastic person. Once I was very, very famous. Really. Oh, wait a minute. Why, why sometime? Come on, tell me now. No, not now. Dr. Stockton has a surprise for you, which is much more important than my brief to the biography. Come on. Oh, hello, Mike. Oh, Dan. Come over here. Sit down. Your fan club hasn't forgotten you. <laughs> yeah, I was beginning to feel neglected. Yeah. Sit down there and hold out your left arm. What are you going to do? You going to handcuff me? <laughs> Wait and see here. This is courtesy, Mr. Page. Great Pacific casualty. Watch, huh? Uh, here, you have to push the stem to open the front of it there. That's it. What time is it? It's 20 past four. Sundown's between 5.45 and 6 this time of year. Maybe you'd like to turn on your lights now without having to ask anybody when. Yeah. What time's dawn? Well, we'll call up the Weather Bureau. And here's another gift from your mother. Now, believe it or not, in addition to being a cane, this is a transmitter receiver unit. It has a set of lenses of its own, photoelectric cell, receiver up here, with a switch there to turn it off and on. Which way's on? To, to your right. Now, yeah. you <laughs> felt that. Yeah. Well, those are the electrodes. When you got it turned on and pointing at something, you'll get that direct electrical pulse sensation. When you point at it, you'll get a bounce back from whatever you're aiming at. The closer you are, the faster the signal, the farther away, the slower the signal. Four second interval equals about 100 yards. So one second's about 25 yards. That's it. Want to try it? Sure. One hundred yards? That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Where did she ever get a thing like this? A laboratory outside of Boston. But don't get to depending on it too much. It has no built-in depth indicator. You could fall into a ditch or a manhole without a dog. Hey, something's coming. 200 yards? 
It's very closer. 100. It's going away now. 150. Port beam, fire one. Uh, Duke Page. Hey, Duke. Hi, Mike. Don't get too smart with that. Still just a cane, you know. Goodbye. I'll see you at dinner, okay? Okay. What is that? This? Uh, this uh, cane. Super cane. <laughs> Would you believe Los Angeles? Another robbery. When? Last night. Same way? Same three men, same Halloween mask, same outfit, same smooth operation. Not a trace. Could they be using a helicopter? Give us a little credit, Mike. Kirk checked that out here, very first robbery. Nobody has chartered a helicopter, either here in New York or in L.A., that we can tie in. That's not the way they're getting out to leave. All right, get me there. Where? Los Angeles. Mike, the entire robbery division of the Los Angeles Police Department's been over the building with a vacuum cleaner. Now, you may be good, baby, but you have to admit you're somewhat handicapped. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, at least now I can tell time. Thanks, Duke. How about this, huh? Let's see, your, uh, your car's over there, isn't it? Yeah. 75 yards. That's very impressive. Yeah, well, it's a little something for a man who has everything, you know. Well, how do I put it on the expense account? Oh, come on, Duke, I'll pay my own way. Well, now, wait a minute. Are you trying to shame Great Pacific Duke, into With you or without you, I'm going to Los Angeles. All right, Angeles. all right. insane world. Noisy. Oh, what are you, what are you trying to... Sorry. What are you, some kind of a degenerate, you nut? Don't what worry, man, don't... He, he's blind. So where's his white cane? You all right? Well, my pride shot to hell, but I still seem to be in one piece. Now, go on, go on. Like Dan said, dog would have known which way is up. You know, two facts keep popping up in all the police reports. The remarkable teamwork of the robbers and the fact that they didn't speak. What does that do for you? I'd say they didn't want to risk voice recognition. Huh? Take it easy now. Yeah, but they're, uh, they were wearing masks. Their voices are muffled, right? So I've been thinking, something about their voices must be so different that even through the masks, if they were to speak, something about their voices would give them away. Now, what could that be? Uh, an accent, some kind of an accent. That's what I've been thinking, Mike. Some kind of very different accent, a very foreign accent. Jet. What? Uh, I hear a jet up there. Yeah, th there's a plane up there, all right. Very hard on the ears. Uh, look, why don't you just point that down? Maybe you'll locate water. <laughs> you lack confidence. Well, uh, look, if you tell me what you're looking for, maybe I can help uh, you. I don't know. Hey, hey, uh, if you thought that escalator was a problem, wouldn't you walk off the roof? No, a very fine lady gave me this gadget precisely so that wouldn't happen. Now, the other edge of the roof is about 10 yards away. Hmm? Well, how about that? I'm beginning to feel handicapped. <laughs> That should be right about here. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's where it is, Mike, right there. What's this? Uh, I don't know, I think it's something they call a, a, a standpipe. Yeah. What is it? Fiber. Rope fiber, maybe. For the police lab to determine. That's smoother here. Could have been caused by some kind of friction. Done. 
Beautiful. You trying to tell me they went down the outside of the building on a rope? Uh, it's easy enough to find out. First, the police lab with that piece of fiber I gave you, if it is fiber. Next, the building super. Find out what workman and when might have put a line around this standpipe. If no workmen have, then we can presume the robbers might have. In which case, somebody should check the outside wall of this building, find out if any of the soot's been rubbed off. So, where does that get us? Well, maybe nowhere. But you have to let yourself reassociate. Now, what kind of men could have pulled this thing off? Working at these heights, working as a team. Oh, uh, steel construction workers, um, welders, riveters, crane men, um, uh, telephone linemen, uh, electric power linemen. Let's see who else? Hey, Mike, Mike. What is that thing? TV antenna. Oh. Or how about uh, high-rise painters or uh, window washers? Yeah, yeah. Now you're cracking. All we have to figure out is which three men in which category, possibly with heavy foreign accents, were in New Orleans, New York, Los Angeles during the time of the robberies. That is, if the theory has any validity to begin with. I'm proud of you, Mike. Glad I insisted on bringing you here. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's made one thing painfully clear. A man who can't get on the right escalator is going to the dogs. Pax? Uh, it's from the Latin word peace. It's pronounced pox, isn't it? But you want a dog named Pox? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Pax. Uh, 86 pounds of bone and muscle. He can afford to be peaceful. I'll make very sure, Mike. This is not like picking a poodle out of a pet store window. This is a marriage. Does he snore? <laughs> How about it, Pax? Can we swing it together? He can. Can you? Am I missing something? Are you? Yeah, apparently, some emotional subtext. What? Just that old-fashioned word, love. Come on back. Uh, it's going to be like learning to play a chess game with each other. Voice and hand signals, with harness, without harness. On command, right, left, stay, forward, sit, lie. All right, all right, you made your point. I didn't mean to. I was hoping you'd arrive at it on your own. You're out of parole, Doctor. Psychiatrists aren't supposed to practice directive techniques, are they? Who said? I care about you, Mike, not techniques. And I'm going to tell you this right now. You've been faking it. All the jokes, all your sense of humor, just a cover-up. All your readjustments, your rethinking, all of it based on the wrong premise. You haven't knocked yourself out to build a new life. You've done it just to prepare for that one moment when you come face to face with the people who killed your wife. All right, you meet him. God only knows when or where, but it must be the only thing you dream about. You meet him. You kill him. Yes. Is that what Pax is for? Just to help you down some dark alley? Lie and wait. Does he disapprove or do you? Out of the two, which reaction is the more natural? The fact that I want to find out who killed my wife doesn't make me subhuman, doctor, more human. A bit flawed, misguided, maybe even criminal. I promise you, Dan, I'll find him. No, Mike, don't hold back. I know how you miss her. Nikki, I... I can't remember her. I, I was sitting here, still with her. The, 
The next second she was gone. The exact image of her face, every detail was gone. I... I can't find it anywhere. Not in my mind, not in that painting. It'll come back. No, no, she's, no, she's gone. She's become abstract, no longer part of me. She's become separated from me. I don't know if I can accept that. We should be coming out of the court of the two sisters about now. Anybody there? There's nobody there. Oh, I guess he got the team. See, that's uh, dollar thirty, right? Uh, are you blind? Or are you putting people on? Oh, your base fare is fifty cents, isn't it? So, and each click of your meter is ten cents more. It took eight clicks to get me here. That's eighty cents plus fifty makes dollar uh, thirty, I think. There you go, and keep the change. How do you know you gave me two ones? That's the way they're folded. All right. Good, Good luck, Mister. Thank you. Morning, Nikki. You're getting to be quite remarkable. Now just don't change your cologne, all right? No, I never realized it was that strong. I was here ten years ago. There, there were some trees out there. Still are. No inscription? That can't be written, not in stone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for asking me. I had a good reason. You usually do. Nikki, 
Come and work with me. Do you want? I'd like to see the world through your eyes. Nikki? Mike, I, I don't know. It seems so... confining. I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds cruel. I don't know... If now, Nikki, before you say no, let me... let me tell you what I have in mind, all right? I'm... I'm leaving Oakhurst. I'm taking a house, going back into business, at least try. I'd like you to find a place, furnish it, be my assistant. It's lousy pay, travel, excitement, and packs all thrown into one. Chance to go broke in style. How can you beat it? May I think about it? Well, think about it positively, will you? All right. I'll think about it positively. Might, maybe. so I can lay some hard news on you. Now, that theory of yours, you know about the rope over the side? Nowhere. We checked that building all the way down. No surface marks, no windows entered, sealed shut, air conditioning. Now, sure, that was rope fiber on the standpipe, but who knows how long it had been there? In short, you think I've had it, huh? Well... Look, I gotta call Gantry and tell him you're here, okay? We will wait for Naismith Okay, dude. Okay. okay.
I forget where I went. Listen to me. Tonight in Chicago, there's a circus opening, the Balkan Circus, four-week engagement. Remember the bomb fragment Kirk found? Russian landmine, right? Okay, now get this. The Balkan Circus opened in New Orleans two weeks before von Marx was robbed. Close the night, Ingrid was killed. Then it went a month to New York, a month in Los Angeles, now Chicago. Every place they've been, they've had a robbery. Duke, I'm telling you, there's going to be a robbery in Chicago. Now, if I remember correctly, Parkman's Jewelers is one of the biggest firms in Chicago. It just happens to be located on the top floor of the Teletex building, and guess what's across the alley from it? You're right, another building. That's how they got away, Duke. Across, not down. They used to get away building while the police were still wrapped up inside the building they robbed. They crossed over on a hand pulley. Three men, fourth man, pulled them back. Stake it out, Duke. Round the clock. Maybe you got some, Mac. Maybe not. Let me check on it. If it holds up and they are the people, we'll get right on it. We'll stake it out. Would you like to be there? I don't need to. Not anymore. Mary, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Listen, you, you you stay on that diet now. I see. Oh, okay, okay, right. Right. Oh, Who's that? Yeah, yeah, Fred, okay, so long. Okay. Thank you for everything. We're going to play I'm tennis the next time. Okay. Huh? Look, yeah, That's George, isn't it? Glad. No, it's yeah, yeah it is. We're going to play some of those horseshoes again. Horseshoes again was real nice. Hi, uh, 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 Janie. Bye-bye. Thank you for everything. Bye, Fred, Georgie. Over here. Bye-bye. Mary Miller. Oh, Mary. How are you? I'm going to come back and see you real soon. Okay, thank Bye-bye. Goodbye. Hi. Well, you had a great speech, you know, for openers. Well, you got nothing for closers? My most unfavorite word, goodbye, Mike. I just guess I'm anti-farewell. Yeah. You really wear sneakers, or are you part Indian? How did you know? 
<laughs> and a faded blue denim shirt, I think, open in front, exposing a great mass of hair in your chest, huh? <laughs> Somebody told you, yeah. huh? Now, goodbye, Dan. Anybody seen a stray dog around here? Pax, come on, boy. I hear you, I hear you. Come on, that's a good boy. <laughs> that's a good boy. Oh, Duke. What, Duke? Duke, you here? Yeah, where should I be? Chicago, you're supposed I to be was. in Chicago. Hey, doctor, let me take care of that. Oh, thank you, Duke. Thank you, sir, very much. Bye again. Well? Uh, well, what? The Balkan Circus, what did you find out? Uh, they opened. Uh, they'll be there a month. Are you telling me they don't have a high wire act? Oh, yeah. The uh, Brazzoni family. I watched them perform. You know, they're very good. Oh, by the way, uh, Mike, I discussed your theory with the police, and they didn't think much of it. Oh, Duke, I know I'm right. Well, you said that they used a hand pulley. Yes, I found a piece of it on the roof across from the Von Marsh building. Just to show you. You shouldn't jump to There's conclusions. There's no other way they could have done it. Sure? Sure there is. Hand over hand. Duke, are you... Are you saying you caught them? <laughs> oh, buddy, you should have been there. They came flying across, bam, right into the bag. The whole mighty Barzoni family. And I talked to those guys, my the father, he asked me how we figured it. I told him. I told him it was you. He asked me to tell you, for whatever it's worth, he's sorry about your wife. Well, if he'd known her, he'd be even sorry. They've been planning this for a long time, but they got to worrying about you. Seems that they, uh, they read some article in a European magazine about all the insurance cases that you'd broken. Since they were shooting for five million bucks in gemstones, you know, they decided to take you out first. Come on. Well, you're back in business, Mike. You like it? Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, come on, come on, Duke. Hmm? You gonna tell me what it looks like? You gonna play that suspense game with me? Nikki? <laughs> what would you have done, Mr. Showoff, if I hadn't deliberately splashed that stuff all over me? <laughs> Give me your hand. <laughs> <laughs> 